Today, the focus of our lesson is writers develop the following, act, following action resolution of a narrative by one, analyze a mentor text to mimic the author's writing style. So far, we have developed the exposition, rising action, climax of the narrative. And now the focus is to mimic the author's writing style when developing our falling action and resolution. So writers develop the falling action resolution of a narrative by analyzing a mentor text and then mimicking the author's writing style. So I went to the text Claudette Colvin and took some time to analyze the text. And my goal is to mimic this author's writing style. So this is, in Claudette's words, but worried or not, I felt proud. I had stood up for our rights. I had done something a lot of adults hadn't done. On the ride home from jail, coming over the viaduct, Reverend Johnson said something to me I'll never forget. He was an adult who everyone respected, and his opinion meant a lot to me. Claudette, he said, I'm so proud of you. Everyone prays for freedom. We've all been praying and praying, but you're different. You want your answer the next morning. And I think you just brought the revolution to Montgomery. And so when I read this, I notice that Claudette, in her own words, is kind of bringing everything together, her goal of fighting injustice. I had stood up for our rights. I had done something a lot of adults hadn't done. And so I want to think of what is the life lesson that can be learned from this narrative. And I'm going to pull up some potential themes, the life lesson that could be learned from this narrative. And two themes that I thought fit would be growing up or ambition. And so one that stood out to me, goals are dreams, we convert to plans and take action to fulfill. That is one that I thought would work and apply to Claudette Colvin. Goals are dreams we convert to plans and take action to fulfill. I had stood up for our rights. I had stood up for our rights. Goals are dreams we convert to plans and take action to fulfill. I had done something a lot of adults hadn't done. And then the Reverend says, I'm so proud of you. Everyone prays for freedom. We've all been praying and praying. That was the dream that all of them had but you're different. You want your answer the next morning. And this is where Claudette converted her plans and took action to fulfill her dream. Took action and stood up for their rights. So now I want to apply that to my own text. I want to think about the theme that exists in my text and really drive that point home. So here is my, the end of my text, my narrative. This is where I stretch the heart of the story and add it to the climax. I begin the process of sitting upright. I'm up, wiggling my way out from under the blankets. I gently place my feet on the ground, get moving, get moving, get moving. I silently murmur to myself, as if in slow motion, I shuffle my way down the hall and tiptoe down the stairs. Follow me, Denali, I whisper. She quickly hops off the bed and trots down the hall and down the stairs. Darkness surrounds me, so my fingertips brush the handrail as I follow Denali safely to the bottom of the stairs. I hear the coffee maker and smell the delicious scent of coffee before I enter the kitchen. Gurgle, gurgle, pop, gurgle, gurgle, pop. Within five minutes, I am relaxing in the back room with a hot cup of coffee and watching American Housewife. So right about here, this part where I say within five minutes, I'm relaxing in the back room with a hot cup of coffee and watching American Housewife. Somewhere, either right before, 
probably right before this, I want to weave in a theme. I want to reiterate a theme and how I know that I have moved on. And so first, I want to take a look at my theme list and some themes that stand out to me, the overarching themes that stand out to me would be perseverance or happiness. And so for me, try, try again really stands out just because I keep trying to change my habit. It, it's not working, but I'm trying. And then another one is something doesn't have to be perfect. It can be good enough. And to be honest, when I think of those two, I'd prefer to go with something doesn't have to be perfect. It can be good enough. So now I want to try to weave that into my narrative. And so I decided to keep my sentence within five minutes. I'm relaxing in the back room with a hot cup of coffee and watching American Housewife. Burrowing into the recliner, I process why waking up in the morning is so difficult. Multiple alarms do not help me pop out of bed. The mental pep talk is worthless. Even though I put forth significant effort to wake up early, and on time, I continue to sleep past my alarm. Maybe this is part of my chemical makeup. Chronic oversleeper. Eventually I wake up and always arrive earlier on time to work. Remembering advice from my mom, I realize that I always have to be thoughtful about the battles I choose to pick. Is this really a battle I want to pick with myself? Probably not. I realize it doesn't have to be perfect it can be good enough. And so just like Claudette was thinking about how she had to stand up for her rights as a human, and she went on to share how adults around her were too scared to stand up for their rights, and she was tired of it, and she decided if they're not going to stand up for their rights, I'm going to stand up for my own rights. I know that Claudette was sharing some of her thinking about that issue, and I want to do the same and share my thinking about waking up in the morning. It is a difficult process. Multiple alarms don't seem to work. However, multiple alarms do get me up and out of bed. I realize it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be good enough. So what did I do? I was working on developing the following action in my narrative by analyzing a mentor text and then mimicking the author's style. And I analyzed Claudette Colvin's and Philip Hoos, the mentor text, how Claudette thinks about what she chose to do. She chose to stand up for their rights. She chose to be firm in her decision, which ultimately put her in jail. And she chose to be proud of fighting for injustice. And so fast forward to my narrative, fast forward to my narrative, and I am sharing, you know, it is hard to wake up in the morning. I don't wake up no matter how many alarms are set. However, I realize it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be good enough. Now, let me give you an example of a few of your classmates from past years. This particular person was so excited to get a puppy, and they shared their theme and realization. My parents came out of their room and announced that we were getting the puppy. Really? I said, yay! Me and my brother got up from the couch and were jumping up and down. We were so excited and happy. What are we going to name her? I thought. But that didn't matter. Right now, I was just full of joy. The day went on and we walked to school. It was super hard to concentrate because all I was thinking about was the puppy. At the beginning of all of this, I thought that this moment would never happen, but it did. I realized that you should never give up on the dreams you have, even if they seem almost impossible. This particular person did a really nice job weaving in the theme and their realization I realized you should never give up on the dreams you have, even if they seem impossible. Here's another example from a seventh grader. This is about losing in a game. I was upset because we lost. It was frustrating. We were so close to the championship. We would have, we would have won, but I knew we had one more tournament 
I knew we had one more tournament or opportunity for a victory. I knew we could win. It just wasn't the game. Afterwards, even though we didn't win, we went to my friend's house and hung out. So it was a fun day. So kind of addressing the fact that it was frustrating, we lost, but we have one more chance. I'm not gonna dwell on that we lost too long because we have one more chance and then going to a friend's house and having some fun. So these are just two seventh grade examples of how seventh graders worked on their resolution by weaving in a theme. And now I wanna show you and remind you, and I'm going to make sure you have access to this. The theme list is going to be posted in the Google Classroom post so that you can browse the theme list to see which theme would best fit your narrative. So what you can do right now is develop the following action in your own narrative by analyzing the mentor text, which I shared, and then work on mimicking the author's writing style. 